hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a shaving bowl. Well, some of you may be wondering what the heck is a shaving bowl, and there are those of you out there who are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. When I shave, I like to use an old style uh, shaving brush and shaving soap, not a shaving cream or a shaving gel. I kind of go old school with the shaving. So the old style soap I used to get was mug soap and it fit inside an old coffee mug and you could whip your uh, lather in there, but I can't seem to get that anymore and the cakes that I get are too large to fit into a mug. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a bowl that holds that soap so that we can use the brush and whip up our lather. Now guys, this all can be done with scrap stock. I'm going to check in the rack and see what I have and then we're going to head over to the bench and I'll show you the first step. Well, the first thing we need for this project is a scrap of, in this case, three quarter inch thick pine. It measures five inches by five inches and I've marked the center. Now guys, you need to know the size of the cake of soap that you're using. And in my case, the round cakes of soap are three and three eighths of an inch in diameter. So using our center mark here, I've set my compass so that I can draw that three and three eighths diameter. And we're just gonna mark it here on our board, just like that. We're gonna verify that it's in fact three and three eighths of an inch. And once we get that done, and we're good, once we get that done, we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw and cut this out. Well, with this being cut out, we're now going to take a second five by five inch square of three quarter inch thick pine. We're going to line it up and we are going to trace the inside of our circle that we just cut to duplicate it onto our second piece. Just like that. Now, at this point, guys, we're going to do something a little different. What we want to do is we want to head over to the scroll saw. We're going to tilt our blade and cut this circle out. But just before we do that, what we're going to want to do is we will measure out from that line half an inch. Just like that. We're going to reset our compass to match up with that line that we just placed and we're going to mark that circumference. All right, so with that done, guys, let's head over to the scroll saw. So for this cut, I have installed a number seven reverse tooth blade. I have tilted my scroll saw blade at five degrees to the right, and we're going to cut out the interior hole that we traced from our first piece by cutting it in a counterclockwise direction. And you end up with something like this. Now guys, without changing the orientation of your piece or the angle of your scroll saw, we're gonna cut the perimeter here that we drew out again, counterclockwise. And what you end up with is this five degree tapered ring. The top actually is the bottom. So we'll turn this around and that will sit on top of our initial block here, just like this. So at this point now, what we want to do is we need to trace out our next piece. So we need another piece of pine and that piece of pine will get lined up here just like this. You're going to use the wider section of your pine, the wider end or the wider side of your hole because it's tapered. One side is smaller, one side is wider. We're gonna use the wider section and we're going to mark it out on our next piece of pine. We'll also mark the wider section of our outside ring as well. And just like we did with our first piece here, 
over at the scroll saw at a five degree angle, we're gonna cut our interior and then our exterior. And there you have your next ring. Now, none of them are cut perfect. None of them align perfectly and that's okay. We're gonna fix that up a little later. So we want to add one more ring, guys. So it's the exact same process. We're gonna take our top ring. We're gonna take another five by five blank, line up our blank on here as best we can, trace the larger diameter uh, surfaces onto our stock, cut them at five degrees over the scroll saw, and I'll see you when you get that done. Okay, there is our third ring. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to line up our rings here as best I can. I'm going to hold them in place and on our base, I'm going to mark this out so that we know where we want to cut a little later, just like that. Okay, and we have now a five by five inch piece of quarter inch thick stock. This is poplar, but it's fine. We're going to take this and we're going to glue it onto the bottom and let that dry up. As well, we are going to sand the surfaces of all of these rings and glue these together as best we can as a unit. Clamp them up and let them dry completely. Before we glue everything together, you want to cut this perimeter that we traced out. However, this is the way we want to do it. You actually want to cut this one clockwise. That way it will bevel down here. If we marked it on the back, it would be counterclockwise. I know it's confusing, but you can double check by knowing you want it to taper down towards the inside of our shaving bowl. So in this case, with our blade tilted to the right at five degrees, we'll cut this out clockwise. Now for me, the final shaping of this shaving bowl is going to be done on the lathe. So what I have is a three inch by three inch piece of pine. It is scrap. It is considered as uh, a consumable in this case. It will be garbage by the time we are done. And I'm going to glue it onto the bottom of our base centered as best I can. But in order to assist me in removing it a little later on, I have a thick piece of craft paper here. This is actually from a thick paper shopping bag. I'm going to coat it with glue and glue it onto our three by three square of pine. And then I'm gonna coat the back side of this with glue and we're going to glue it, clamp it in place and let it dry. Once that is dry, we can then glue our three rings on top of our bowl, clamp everything together, and at that point, you'll want to let everything dry overnight. Well, it's the next day and all of our glue is dried and I have mounted this to the lathe using a faceplate on that three by three square of pine that we glued on the bottom. Now, I don't expect this to turn true. I figure it's going to be a little wonky. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to level this out. Um, Guys, you have to remember that craft paper that you glued in between the two layers here is designed to help you break this free later. Um, so if you get a catch, it will break it free. So you want to be careful and just take light passes. So let's get this outside leveled out and evened out and turning true. And with that, we have the outside turning true. Now from here, I want to turn our attention to the inside, but we do have an awfully thin wall here. Um, I wonder if that's gonna blow out, but we'll play it by ear and see how it goes. Let me switch around to the inside of our shaving bowl and see if I can get the inside of it leveled out. Well, we've got the inside 
pretty much leveled out. And now we're just going to level out the top of this. And from there, we'll do a little more work on the outside to smooth this out just a touch. And from here, guys, we're going to give the entire thing a good sanding inside and out. And once you're done sanding, we can remove our faceplate. Now, guys, this is not a perfect turning by any means. And in fact, on the inside, the hole or the recess that is going to hold the soap is actually off center. Um, the reason for that, this project was not initially slated as a lathe turning project. This was going to be shaped on um, the oscillating drum sander as well as the belt sander. Um, and then I wanted to try out some new chisels that I had acquired, so I, it morphed into a lathe project. But as we can see here, hopefully, it is not centered. And the reason for that is I didn't want um, to center this and by doing that enlarge the hole so that my soap didn't fit in here properly. Is it a perfect bowl? Absolutely not, but it's nice and smooth and I like the way it looks. I'm pretty happy with the progress of it. So at this point now, all we need to do is chop off this uh, mounting block, our temporary faceplate block. And for that, we should be able just to get a chisel right in there at the joint level, give it a quick little crack, and that should release without any kind of an issue. And then you can clean up the top of it just by using your chisel and clean off that glue and the rest of the paper residue. Well, with all my talk about the thin walls and hoping it didn't blow apart on the lathe, while cleaning up the bottom, I got a little sloppy and a little careless, and I ended up dropping the bowl. And that resulted in a crack that goes right through, I don't know if you can see that, at least two of the layers and then slightly into the third. Now, I'm not going to be too, too concerned about it. I'm a little disappointed about it, but um, we'll see how it goes. Because the next step here is to make this bowl, which is pine. I probably should have used a hardwood, but this is kind of the prototype. I'm going to seal this bowl up. And the way we're going to do that is actually with epoxy resin. Um, so I'm going to mix up a small batch of epoxy and then probably using a foam brush, we're going to brush it on all over the inside and the outside of this bowl and then let that completely cure. Well, guys, there is the first coat done. Um, I'm going to let that dry and set up before I do anything else. Truth be told, I did not coat the bottom yet. I will do that after, um, only because I'm having some issues here with the epoxy running down and causing uh, some drips at the bottom. But I expected that. I was just hoping that I would be able to avoid it. No big deal. We are going to continue this. Um, the epoxy hopefully is going to seal up that crack and then the crack might become a design feature and they'll say, ah, I meant to do that, you know, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, we're going to let this set up now, guys, and we're going to give it two more coats for a total of three coats of epoxy inside and out. I'm not going to film it. You don't need a video of me painting on and mixing epoxy. So once I get that done, I'll come back and see you. Well, I finished the third coat and it is completely dry. And guys, this thing is super glossy, super sealed. Um, there is no liquid that is going to get into this wood. The good thing as well is that crack, you can see it right here, runs right down uh, about three quarters of the way down through the entire bowl. That completely sealed up and the thicker epoxy coating has glued that back together. So. We'll see how, what kind of longevity that has uh, with the epoxy holding it. So with that now being done and this thing uh, finished, the epoxy is all dry, all you really need to do is you need to add your cake of shaving soap into the bottom here. Just like that, we can see how that fits in there. And uh, from there, your shaving brush, and away you go, guys. So there you go. A shaving uh, bowl. And there you have it. A shaving bowl. 
Guys, this project was a hot mess. It really was. It started off as a scroll saw project and that was what I had in mind. And then I got the opportunity to try out some new chisels and it morphed right over into a lathe turning project. And that caused problems of the hole for the soap being a little off center from what I needed which didn't give me the symmetry that I wanted. Uh, the bowl was too thin on the edges and then I dropped it and then I cracked it and then it just kind of morphed. It just went from there. But we ended up all in all in the end with a nice looking bowl. I mean, from my liking, I'm not so sure if I like the shape of it. It's a little too upright for me. It's a little too lacking in shape. So uh, I'm going to try it. I'm going to use it out for a while and see how I like it, see how it performs. If it gives me the good uh, area inside to be able to lather up my shaving brush, then I'm happy with it. Um, but I would, I would rather more of a bowl. But either way, guys, there's a lot of techniques in today's show that you could pull from the show and use for other things. The main one being tilting that blade on the scroll saw and being able to make the sections and glue them together. Truth be told, that was the main intention of this video. And what I was going to do was I was going to use belt and disc sanders or belt and drum sanders rather to complete the shaping of the inside and the outside and level everything off. It just didn't turn out that way. It changed. And sometimes that happens in the shop. But either way, guys, I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen with this project. You'll probably see it on an update show <laughs> sooner than later. Um, but either way, it's a great project. There were a lot of great techniques that we're in today. And that resin really does a great job of sealing up that wood. So if you're planning on making a project that will see a lot of moisture or see water, the resin, guys, that seals that right in so well. It's, uh, it's crazy how well that seals it in and apparently <laughs> repairs cracks. <laughs> guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. This one is bizarre. I don't think I've ever had a project that morphed this much in such a short period of time. I also don't think I've ever really had a project uh, where right after finishing making it or during making it, I wasn't really a fan. Uh, or I wasn't sure if I was a fan, but this one was a first. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to take some of these methods that I showed you today and try them for yourself. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.